trying to learn how to do a 360 because the floors are really slippery. Ugh. But I have a challenge for you today. If you like videos and you like YouTube and you make videos and you like B-roll, today we're doing the B-roll challenge. <laughs> Okay, the B-roll challenge, I think you guys are gonna like this. I do it myself when I'm by myself because it helps me get better. It helps flex that creative muscle because sometimes you gotta push yourself to get better. So I get asked all the time on Twitter, on emails, how do you shoot B-roll? And I usually refer everyone to like the, the, the B-roll tutorial that I did almost a year ago. But that was a long time ago. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a, a video called the B-roll king, which was my favorite lens for B-roll. But I wanted to make a video today that was kind of fast, but, and when I say fast, like this could very well be 13 minutes. I haven't started editing yet, so we'll just, uh, we'll see about that. But I love this challenge because it makes me think really, really hard about every aspect of filmmaking. So let me properly explain to you what this challenge is. So this is the challenge. You find somewhere in the world, be it that it's the intersection right below where you live, or maybe it's the park by your house, maybe it's your kitchen, somewhere slightly uninteresting, and you challenge yourself to one camera and one lens, and you have to make a 30 second B-roll sequence in that spot, no matter what. So if your spot's an alleyway with a dumpster, make it look good. 30 seconds of B-roll, let's go. So I'm gonna show you guys that. We're gonna pick a few different locations and I'm going to show you my process and thought process behind how I capture the B-roll clips that I capture no matter where I am. So we're gonna go downstairs right now. We're gonna start at the intersection and I'm gonna shoot 30 seconds of B-roll just limited only to that intersection with the camera and the lens that I have. No extra help from anybody else. I want this to be a one-on-one -on -one thing. If you have a friend that normally helps shoot for you, get rid of them. It's just us. But before I do that, coffee. B-roll, I like to shoot both wide and tight. Some people only like really wide lenses, some people only like really cropped in lenses, but I believe that having both of these tools allows you to show one thing twice. And what do I mean by that? Maybe I get some B-roll of the leaves of a tree, but it's wide, so you can see the whole tree. But then maybe I wanna do a punch in or a quick zoom kind of transition to get that leaf really, really close up. That's what I'm gonna use a wide lens for. So I always keep a wide lens and like a tight lens, like a, not a telephoto, but like an 85 and like a 16. I always keep those two things in my bag just for the versatility of being able to get that subject captured in two different styles. So for this experiment, I'm gonna use a 35 mil and an 85 mil, both prime fixed focal length lenses. One more thing before we go outside. I'm gonna shoot everything at 120 frames per second. If your camera doesn't shoot 120, which is that nice, ooh, slow-mo, uh, you can shoot at 60 frames a second. Now, if your camera doesn't have 60 frames a second and you only have 24, uh, use that to your advantage. Make your cuts, make your B-roll sequence a faster paced edit, faster cuts, a little more intense. So you use what you have to the best of your ability. With this camera, I'm using 120 because everything looks so good in slow-mo. You could also say that might be a little bit of a crutch, and yes, I would admit that as well, but I have it, I'm gonna use it, but I'm gonna mix in some 24P with that slow motion. Okay, let's go. Here's the thing about shooting outside. Now, I'm hiding under this awning in this little slice of shade so the light looks decent, but that's exactly it. The light is like high noon right now. It's very harsh sunlight, so you have to have an ND filter if you're shooting B-roll outside. Now, you can see the intersection behind me. There's not much going on. It's literally just a boring, straight up intersection. So the first thing I do when I'm looking to shoot B-roll is I find the details. So I'm gonna turn the mic around, I'm gonna do one little lap of this intersection so that I kinda get some ideas, feel it out, see what I can shoot, come back and we'll make a plan. So let's do that now. Okay, so you'll notice the first thing is that flag is just violently flapping in the wind. So I will for sure get that because that's good motion, good kind of a representation of this area. There's lots of flags, so that would be number one that I see. All right, number two, I always like the crossing signs and the stoplights, getting those switching from red to green to orange from the cars going by. That's obviously something I'll also do. It's just hard because the light gets shadowed here and then it's super harsh here. So your exposure is changing completely. You can see as the car goes by now, it's completely dark and then it's completely bright. 
So that'll be a bit of a challenge, but again, we have ND filters on and we're going to shoot probably that with an 85 to compress that background a bit. But we got the hand sign, the stoplights, and the car's going by here. Let's cross. Across the street, I really like the leading lines here. So maybe like a little kind of slider shot past this tree as the traffic goes, it might look good. And if you notice, looking at this, you can see the sun kind of just peeking through the trees here. I love capturing that kind of stuff in slow motion. It looks so good. So this would be detail number two. So we've got the flag, we've got the tree, and we've got the cross signs moving on. All right, so just standing here waiting for these cars to pass, I noticed like all the paint that's kind of peeling where they would stop, the bicycle logo, the different textures from this crosswalk to the road. So I might probably get close-ups of tires going over all of these different textures like that, but really, really close. Like these cracks in the road here, I'd probably get down nice and low like this, zoom in and wait for a tire to go by. That with an 85 would look really nice. So that's probably what I do with this corner. Okay, right away I noticed my reflection in the mirror. So that could be cool to work with. The clouds look really dope. So maybe some kind of slow movement with this reflection, which is actually that building. That looks good. I really like how this pole looks looking straight up to it. That looks really cool. So if we did like a spinning shot in slow-mo along with this building and this old architecture, I think that mixed in would look cool. So I think we're good. We're about to cross the street and go back to where we started. Okay, so now that we have like a little bit of a plan for what we're gonna do at each corner, I'm gonna go shoot that stuff wide now and then we're gonna go shoot it close up and we'll mash them together and see what we get. So let's go do that. Okay, so we are done shooting B-roll now with 35 mil. I'm gonna put the 85 on and shoot a lot of the same clips and get some in-camera transitions. And I taught you guys that here, link above, wherever it, it goes. I never know what side it's on. It's here. <laughs> so the 85 goes on, we're gonna get the same style B-roll shots, show you what that looks like, very compressed. Then we're gonna mash them together and see what they look like as one whole sequence. So, 85. So that was the 85, that's what those shots look like, nice and close. So now we've shot our B-roll sequence both in wide and tight. So now it's time to put them both together. But before we do that, I like to shoot what's called like in-between clips. Clips that I can use in between the wides and the tights to just nicely tie everything together. Those are pan left and right, pan up and down, pan from a flag, down a flag pole, kind of in-camera transitions. I like to shoot that stuff to make sure I have both wide, tight, in-betweens, now, with all of those things together, I can smash them into one B-roll section with some audio sound effects, and it'll look something like this. I also want to mention that B-roll segments don't have to be like 30 seconds, one minute long. They can be as long as you want, but sometimes you only use B-roll clips to just take you from point A to point B. So if I'm going from the office to my truck, I don't need a whole minute's worth of segment, of slow-mo segment to kind of transition me to that truck. It could just be three clips or five clips, and grouping your clips in threes and fives is always better than doing 
stuff like two clips or seven clips. Like you always want to kind of stick with three or five or a full segment. So if you guys watch my vlogs and are familiar with my filmmaking, you'll know that I either do really long sequences or something just really, really fast to transition to the next scene instead of just like a hard cut. So all of this to say, this isn't the definitive guide to B-roll. I mean, I could probably make five to 10 tutorials on B-roll alone, but this is more of a, of a challenge for you so that you can understand that you don't need to be in the most interesting places to get great footage. It's all about finding the details, looking for the little things wherever you are and how you can tie them together to create a sequence that tells a story. That's more so what this exercise, what this whole video is about. That's why I made it for you guys. So with that being said, I challenge you guys to go find a really boring area close to where you live. Just go by yourself and see what you can come up with with the B-roll challenge in hashtag PM B-roll challenge. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. That's part of the fun. Look beyond what everyone else sees and look for those unique things that can tell your story the way you want to tell it. So with that being said, hit that like button if you like this video, smash it if that's something that you're into, 2018 style. Subscribe if you aren't already and, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.